What's up everyone? Dar Sizzle and Pudding coming at you from behind the camera. Today we are up here in Central Florida and we are with our good friends from Osceola Outback, Captain Byron and Kim. And today we're dropping the boat in the water right now and we're about to do, you can see up here in the front of the boat, some bow fishing. I'm excited, other than the fact that we have a pretty overcast sky at the moment. So I'm hoping the clouds will break and we'll be good to go. But we're getting all set up. Byron's parking the truck and we're going to head out into the alligator infested waters. First fish, just well, first shot, just just uh, landed the first fish. So I'm at 100%. Byron just said the last time. I bow fish with them. It's been quite a few years now, but the last time I did it, I failed to shoot a single fish and I was using a right-handed bow at the time, but now I've got the left-handed because I'm left eye dominant and I just got the first tilapia in the boat. Hey, Darcy. Sick. Complete redemption because this is the exact same spot I brought you to yes. when you first came. Was it? Yes. Exactly. Really? Yes. Exactly. So you just got redemption. You're 100%, throw your bow in the garbage, you're never going to shoot better than that. <laughs> I'm never going to shoot better than that. I agree. Where's the, where, oh, you're not filming. No, I, I got to move yeah. it. Hell yeah. Yep. We're going to fill this Ooh, cooler. Right, quick. Here, guys. That was awesome. I, I just put the that drone up, awesome. and then she shot a fish before I could even get the camera on. That was so, awesome. Killing it. Again, we're out here with uh, our right. good buddies uh, from Osteo Outback Adventures. They do all kinds of stuff. Bow fishing, bass fishing. All the cool stuff. Monday fishing. Check my the information down below. But we're going to kill a ton more fish here. Right here, Darcy. Come in, see his eyeballs. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, Nailed them. <laughs> hey, Darcy. This is going to be quick. <laughs> Huge improvement, right? <laughs> when you. What? Did you unicorn them? Yeah. I sure did. All right, so they're just shocked that last time I did this, how bad I sucked. So, so it just goes to show you, you use the right equipment. You're gonna nail them right in the head. Unicorn. Just like that. <laughs> Unicorn, we called it. I like that name. That's cool. Look at these stud tilapia. Huge blue tilapia. All right, two for two. Wow. She missed. Blow mine. All right. Just take the tip off. And then this fully swings back, and then you just take it out. Now we're back to shooting. Got it. Whoa! All right. Stone that fish right here. He literally just stopped moving and fell into the grass right here. See him right here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just stoned his butt. All right, so just so you guys know, the bow that I'm using today, this is an AMS Hooligan Retriever Pro uh, left hand retrieve because I am left eye and left hand dominant. And this is what works for me, so just make sure you get the right tools. But this can be found on the Amazon store. I'll be linked. Oh! That was not cool. Get He's him. totally dead. Shoot him. Grab him. When you're left, you're, you're shoot him. Shoot bow him. Again. Shoot him again. Yeah. You shoot him. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Thank you. Um, <laughs> if you're left hand dominant, is that the hand you whack pudding with? Yes. <laughs> How'd you know? <laughs> All right. So somehow he fell out after he got stoned. But Byron reshot him for me. So now he's coming back in the boat. I'm here for backup. He's, he's totally dead. His eyeballs came out. Totally dead. That's when his eyeballs come out or totally dead? Yes. <laughs> and they stop moving. And they stop swimming. Anytime your eyes come out, you're dead. And you yes. got an arrow through the middle of your brain? Yes, you're dead. You're dead. You're dead, dead, dead yeah. Stoned him. Well, just, Thank you. Just the latest scientific information for you. All right. Yes. We're going to get him in the cooler. Oh, and I then. Made a quick open, quick shut. Boom. And you can see we're getting that pretty full, full pretty quickly. And this is also my release that I'm using, handheld release. A little on the expensive side, but worth it. And there's all different kinds of releases out there. So that's what I'm using. That's my setup. And let's get back to shooting some more fish. When the eyeballs come out, they're dead. <laughs> yes, he is. Got him. Ooh, he's doing all spirals. A fighter. We got a fighter. Death rolling. Death rolling. <laughs> get up here, you sucker. They're so pretty. Each one is like unique and just really cool looking. Look at that. Pretty. Got, got him. him! Yay! We got one. All right, guys. So if you want to come out here and do this too and just catch some stud tilapia, plus a whole bunch of other stuff, but Osceola Outback is the place for you. 
This is actually a smaller guy right there. Is that a different species? No, just the okay, yeah. it is the same. Okay, just a, I yeah. Think the female would be a female. Gotcha. So that looks like that's a female tilapia. That's why she's so much darker. But again, if you want to come shoot some fish and just have a ball, again, Osceola Outback, Captain Byron Hennessy and Kim will put you on the fish. But they also have an awesome Bear Mundy farm where you can go catch and release Bear Mundy. You can go alligator hunting, bass fishing. You can do all kinds of awesome things up here in Central Florida with them. So I'll link their information down below in the description. Let's get some more fish. Now I know what you guys are gonna be like, can you eat those, can you eat those? The tilapia, this is like one of the top five most eaten fish in the world. Byron, is, what is it, like number one? Byron knows about this kind of stuff. I, I'm not sure, but I know that worldwide tilapia is probably the most served fish on the menu of yeah. any other fish. So right. they come from anywhere from the, the Vietnam to uh, China to Costa Rica. They're heavily farmed heavily, you know, heavily purchased and sought after fish for the table. So. Yeah, I Googled it and it's like everywhere I looked at either the top three or top five most eaten fish. Yeah. And uh, we've had them before and we're yeah, going to have them again in this video, here, but you know, it just, they're so widely used because they're easy to grow and they're deli honestly delicious. The, the white meat, it's flaky. I mean, it's mild, so like, you know, there's not a I think a lot taste. of I think a lot of people disagree with that. In the last tilapia video we did, a lot of people said how gross they are and they would never eat it. Well, and well you know, meanwhile, everyone in the world eats it, though. And it if you're eating you them in it. an area that it's got a lot of blue-green algae or if it's a, a you know, dingier area, right. then that fish is going to be strong. It would be yes. any different than any other fish. But when you're out here in an area that's a, a flow-through area, clean water. This is the St. John's River? This is the headwaters of St. John's. The top so, of the St. St. John's? Yes, sir. So you've got clean water, you've got a lot of flowing water. We're after a you know major rain event here in Florida. So the fish are clean, the water's clean, the flays are gonna be a lot wider and brighter than they would if they were in a dingy mud hole. You don't wanna eat them in a backyard pond. That, right? I just did that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were delicious in my backyard canal. Oh, canal, but see there's water flowing at some yeah. point. Yeah, this yeah. and you guys can Google uh, yes. you know, the health advisories for your any waterway almost, and they'll yes. tell you, what, you know, how much you can eat and what's dangerous in it. Got him! Got him! Oh, so, we both got him! You look that stuff up if you're worried, you know? <laughs> you nice. Brian, film this. Oh, Are you guys Brian both on the same it. fish? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we literally shot the same fish. Awesome. One through the head and one, one through, through the tail. The tail. <laughs> Doesn't get better than that. And I got a lot of film when I was talking. <laughs> That's pretty sick. You got a, it's a hammock fish. <laughs> it's a hammock you made him a hammock out of that die hard movie? You want the head or you want the gut? <laughs> Both ends. Oh the eyeball and the tail. That is funny. <laughs> I shot and then a millimeter later he shot. That's funny. Millimeter. Second. Another little trivia about the St. John's River, Captain. This is the only river that runs backwards or some crazy crap? It's the only major river in North America that flows north. Flows north. 316 miles long, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, it flows Thank north. It's one inch per mile of fall, so it's a very slow. And if anyone knows about an inch, I know my. He inches. knows his inches. He got... <laughs> well, <laughs> don't don't watch that. I'm gonna bleep that. Oh God, don't miss, Doctor. Boom! <laughs> don't miss. We got him. Good job. Look at this guy. Stud after stud. Oh, there's another big one. Everybody's gonna be eating good. Nice. Heck yeah. All right, let's get him in the cooler and get some more. You can see that we have really overcast conditions at the moment. So it's just tough shooting these fish, but at the same time, we're getting it done. The sun or the clouds are not stopping us from filling this cooler. Not that one. Finally. Oh, that's a big gar. Woo. Look at that one. That one's pretty. Purples, blues. So pretty. All right, so I know a lot of you guys are going to be asking what we're doing with all of these fish. Do not worry. These fish are not getting wasted. Again, uh, Byron was saying before that he could come out here and shoot a thousand fish in a week and come back the next week, and there's that many more tilapia to shoot. So they're just so plentiful. They're everywhere. So we're going to be feeding ourselves, of course, our friends, our neighbors, anybody who wants fish, and then, of course, the carcasses will go in my crab traps. So nothing goes to waste, guys. But this cooler is pretty close to full. That's a big cooler. So 
So from my original bow fishing trip all those years ago to today, we absolutely just slayed the fish and filled this cooler in a matter of what? An hour, maybe? An hour in pretty like cloudy conditions, so that made it tougher. But Byron said I've already done a thousand percent better. So her first shot was a thousand percent better because she did it in one shot, what she didn't do the entire five hours of time before that. <laughs> exactly. So there you go. Like Excellent. I said before, as long as you have the proper equipment for your left or right eye dominate, that's the key to success over here. Okay. So we've got all these big, beautiful blue tilapia in the cooler that we're going to be taking home for a catch, clean, cook. Don't forget about Byron and Kim, like I told you, Osceola Outback Adventures. Great people, you're gonna have a ball and get out here and do some bow fishing before the rainy season comes and you're not gonna be able to. So just to check out that information down in the description box below. Fishthepit.com, go for barramundi, bass, alligator hunts, all that good stuff. And of course, I'm gonna hook them up with some land shark logger. Drink responsible Sweet. and don't drink and drive. There you go, very important. All right, so we're gonna put these guys in our cooler and then we'll meet you guys at the house to clean one of these bad boys and I'll show you how delicious they're gonna be. All right, time to fillet a ton of tilapia and feed all of our friends, family, neighbors, whoever wants fish, our lawn guys, anybody. But this particular fish, I'm gonna fillet in front of you guys and get him filleted for the kitchen uh, so Brian can cook them up for us. So big tilapia, if you guys thought the tilapia in my backyard canal were are big, these were way bigger, crazy that their average size is about five pounds up to about seven pounds. So that's a really big tilapia, but also quite delicious. And the water that they live in is just super, super fresh. So you wanna go underneath all these scales. They have the crazy, crazy scales. Just pulled a couple off his body there. And then that way you don't dull your knife as fast. It's very important to try and not dull your knife as fast as possible. So going underneath those scales really eliminates that knife getting dull quickly. And then just all the way down the back, there's the shot with the bow. Not sure who shot this one, but it was fun catching a ton of them and literally filling the cooler in under an hour. That was insane. All right, and then same exact thing down here. The crazy thing with the tilapia is that they have this really a big rib cage that protrudes off their body. So you're gonna see it in this fillet here. But quite a tasty fish. And I know some people even smoke tilapia. I know there's a lot of different recipes out there and it's interesting to hear from you guys because a lot of you guys say, you, I would never eat a tilapia. But it all depends on where the fish is come, comes from. It's very, very, very important. And buying a tilapia in the store is way different than going out and shooting one fresh and knowing exactly the waters that these fish came from. Um, and then from now until basically through the rest of the summer, these fish are gonna be spawning and they are gonna be plentiful. They are gonna be everywhere. And hopefully I'm gonna be going back to those waters soon because there are some giant catfish up there. I saw one that it literally is probably a fishing story because you guys will never believe me, but the thing was massive. I didn't even think it was a fish. So I hope to get back up there soon and shoot some more fish with the bow because I love bow fishing. All right, so there you can see that rib cage really protruding. We just went around it, kept it intact all the way down. There we go. There's one fillet. And that is the bow shot, of course. So we're just gonna cut that out just as similar as a gaff shot, of course. Um, same thing, you would just cut that out of the meat, no big deal. Go ahead and skin it. Get off my meat. All these flies, bad this time of the year. And they do have a bloodline that runs like right on their skin line. I really wouldn't worry too much about it. Try to keep the knife a little up. Go all the way down. I'm sure you guys are also looking at the jewelry that I'm wearing. I hand make every single one of these on my website, available for sale. Sterling silver push hook bracelets and sterling silver necklaces, a wide variety to pick from. Um, and a lot of you guys have been buying the necklaces lately, so I highly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, go ahead and check that out if you haven't. My website, darcelsoffshore.com, and all that information will be linked down below, as well as promo codes for these awesome knives if you're interested too. And then we're just knocking out the bloodline and a little bit of the pin bones, and then we're all set. And I'm sure you guys have questions maybe a little bit more about like these little pieces that protrude off the filet. That's where his actual like fin was. That's his fin muscle meat. 
So we don't really eat that. Actually, Brian's going to clean that up in the house. We'll just take that off. You can, of course, but I'm just, we just showing you. And then the same exact thing on the top here, that's where it was attached to the uh, fin, to the dorsal fin meat. So we we'll kind of just pull that little piece off as well. But yeah, that's about it. So I'm going to cut out this uh, bow shot, this little circle, a little bit of red meat there, meat that got some fresh water on it. And that's it. He's ready. A little bit of red meat there, not a big deal. We're going to cook right through that and eat around it, and it probably will be uh, tasteless, but yeah, we're all set. So I'm going to finish up the other side of this beautiful tilapia, fillet a ton more, and then I'll meet you guys in the house for the cooking we put in portion of this video because I took a lot of those tilapia home. Fun, fun. Another great job does sizzle filleting that tilapia, and welcome guys to another edition of Cooking with Puddin'. Did you notice I don't have my hat on? You may also notice I look extra handsome today. That's because this is the after pick of my beautiful hair and dye job. We spent the whole day at the hair club and uh, took some great before and after pictures. Here's a before, here's an after. Here's another before, and of course this is me after. So we had a great time there, I just wanna remind you guys. Of course, anybody can go there, men and women, hair or no hair. They're leader in hair, cl hair club they're a leader in hair restoration, regrowth, revitalization, all that good stuff, but anyone can go there. They also do all those wigs for uh, people who need it through the health, uh, health reasons, like cancer and all this kind of stuff, so it's really a great organization. But anyway, got a new haircut, here we are. And then we're doing this tilapia, and I decided to do something a little different. Oh, it's coming out super nice. And I, may, I wanted to try something different because that's why you guys are here, and I got tired and fat of just doing that cream and different creams and butters, right? So this is a, I gotta read it again. I may need to put my glasses on. It's an Italian condiment sauce and it's called Sal Mariglio. It, I guess it's mostly, <laughs> mostly uh, from Sicilian area of, of Italy and I just Googled it up and it's mostly uh, lemon and olive oil and water. Put a bunch of spices in here and I got some B-roll of course and it's super simple. You just mix it all up in a bowl. It's got like parsley and oregano, salt and pepper. I doubled the garlic, of course, and uh, just mix it up real nice. And I got it in a pan here with some butter. And it's also very dietetic, you know, again, because no butter or cream like I like to do all the time. So I think it's gonna turn out pretty good. And a funny thing with the tilapia is, I'm still filming this like a week later. So we had given all that tilapia away and eaten a bunch. And so then we realized today we had no more tilapia left. Dar Sizzle just went out in the backyard, one shot, shot a tilapia, brought it in, here we go. <laughs> so it's really nice little hunting she did. That was pretty exciting. And that's really it. We're getting, we're moving right along here. It looking delicious, I could be sure. I'm gonna bring the camera over. Since Dar Sizzle's not here. Here you go. Look at that. Here's the sauce. And uh, it looks like it's gonna be great. It's gonna be healthy at least. So we're gonna get right to this. I wanna get a close up on my hairdo, of course. I, I dye my hair, it's totally gray, hereditary, but uh, I do have a lot of hair. Anyway, that's the hair story. So uh, we'll see right at the table so Dar Sizzle can try this delicious sauce. All right, Dar Sizzle. All right. Let's have a beer with it. It matches the sauce. The sauce is kind of yellow because there's a lot of lemon in it. Yes. Two large lemons. Yes, it does it, look like beer. It's really quite good. It's light, it's a very light sauce. And my reading on it, in Italy, it's, it's 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 a condiment you put on the table, like butter or mayonnaise or something, or olive oil. You can marinate in it, which I think is a great idea. It's pretty good. It's good, right? Marinating is the bomb, I think. Yeah, does it taste like a marinade? It's so lemony. It'll soak in. Yeah. Better. Yeah. It's super light. Never had this sauce before, but right, super light. It's literally just water, olive oil, parsley, and lemon. Yeah, it's a bunch crazy. of spice, a little garlic. <laughs> I add a little sugar because just for taste, and you do salt and pepper to taste. Very good. It's nice and light and delicious, isn't it? It's very, very good. And guys, so I don't know why people keep putting in comments like they don't, tilapia is junk or whatever, but like even the his whole aunt, world like, eats it. Yeah, even his aunt, we had like all this tilapia, like you want fresh tilapia? Ew, no, no, I'm not gonna have that. Like whatever you hear from your friends, like that are, that's negative about a fish, you're not gonna eat it, it's funny. 
telling you, it's delicious. There's nothing wrong with tilapia. It's good. It's like one of the best foods. Especially right fresh caught in mm. beautiful river here in Florida. It's super good. Um, and some, uh, another thing about why it's invasive, you know, it doesn't like eat other things like as a carnivore, but it takes over. They grow really fast and, and they breed like crazy. And Byron was telling us that the one main reason is that, you know, they overtake in the area and they sit in people's beds, <laughs> not people's, but bass beds. Yeah. And eat eggs, but also they, they they suck up all the oxygen and they can breathe a little bit of air, right? Like a tarpon a little bit. So they can survive in some really, you know, with stagnant water yeah. or like non-oxygenated water right. that kills all the other fish. Right. And there's so many of them. Like, again, he said, they just breathe all the oxygen that's in the water and then all the other fish that actually need it that can't air breathe, like largemouth large bass and peacocks and all these other native fish here, uh, even though peacocks aren't native. But yeah. anyways, you get the point that uh, it just kills other species. And I know when they, when they make those nests, it's these big nest of sand and they kick up sand and when they do that the uh sand end up end, ends up covering the eggs of cichlids and all these other fish largemouth bass and so on and so mm. forth that makes sense. man i ate that i ate that as fast as i oh could oh my goodness did you guys see that um i was gonna say something else about that too they kick up the sand oh I, uh someone had commented on facebook you know it's great that we have so many great followers and fans but he was a federal Fish inspector, it's like his whole career, he retired, he's like 25 years. And he said, you know, and he commented on tilapia, he said tilapia is perfectly fine. The only issues are sometimes with farm raised from China, which of course we'd all suspect. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like of course. Right. But, um, you know, again, it's the most populous fish in the whole wide world, invasive, eat them up, eat them up. I like it. His words like gobbled together. He literally just said populist fish. Like, populist fish? Populish fish? I do. I'm from New York. I speak very, very fast. Yes. And I People think he has a stutter and he has like a problem. No, I have a, mental, I have a mental problem. All <laughs> right, guys. Well, thank you for joining us on this adventure. I'm getting way better with the bow. Comment below if you agree. Killing it. Let, I, uh, she killed it with the bow, but I don't, I don't include the misses. No, he doesn't include the misses. No, but those first two, she got bam, bam. And then she shot just as well as Byron. Not, not yeah. as well as Byron, but just as well as Kim. Just as miss, They missed just as many fish as I did. Well, so. Byron's a little better than a lot of people, but yes. Yeah. But, you know, she yeah. did great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So check out Osceola Outback down in the description below. What else do we need to mention? Uh, the knives, yeah, we'll promo on. code, and all that good stuff down below. Yes. But thank you guys so much for watching. We love each and every one of you. And let us know if you want any more bow fishing videos. Drop it down below. And until our next adventure, follow, follow your dreams, dreams and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. Cheers.